What's going on guys? So today I wanted to do a quick review on our Stander X with 417 hours. We'll call it a 400 hour review. Um, just kind of go the pro over the pros and cons of everything over the years. This model is a 2020, right? 2021. Yes, this is a 2020 48 Stander X. The 48 inch deck, Kawasaki engine. Overall, really no issues considering the first thing i gotta say is it has 417 hours let's check just i'm pretty sure it's 417. yep 417 and the deck had or the deck belt no belts have gone yet on it which is amazing because i constantly still check them you know throughout the week just to make sure and we have and we have a few on on deck back there uh but so the deck belt's been in great shape and the belts in the back, which I've never had to replace on any right. Wouldn't know how to do that if that happens. But besides that, this has been an amazing mower. Wright was one of the first mowers we bought back in 2016. I bought my first brand new, uh, I think it's called the Velky, or no, that's the name of the wheels. Um, it's the, it was just a belt driven pull cord walk behind, bought that. And then ever since then, you know, went up from there with the Stander X. As you can tell, we have two and an intensity back there. And the other ones are actually out in the mowing in the snow trailer for now. Just moving everything around. But this is the oldest Stander we have. So a few things to go over. Zero grease points on these mowers, which is awesome. Everyone, everything is, I guess, sealed, which is pretty cool. But I believe... Yeah, there's nothing on the decks. Nothing, nothing at all, which is really, really neat. But, so that's, that's pretty easy. With the skags, you always had to grease everything up, but nothing on the rights. So, the cow, this one has the cow, <coughs> excuse me, this one has the Cowie engine. Great engine. We've run Kawasaki. I'm, it's the only engine I've ever ran was a Kawasaki on every mower, just because what it came with. Zero issues. Nothing, no problems at all. Now I can say with the oil changes, it's a little tight back here with these rights. I mean, I'll try to put my hand in there to show, but you really, I mean, you bust your knuckles up big time in here. It's not as open as the Skags, but again, uh, this hands down, not, you know, this is just, it's just minor, a minor complaint, but everything's back here for the oil, has the little drain plug underneath down there. But besides that, like I said, pretty tight, not fun, but that's that. What else? You know, cutting grass up here, this thing is great. The, you can get the bag that comes with it, which we, we're in the Northeast and it bags and cuts beautifully, leaves great stripes. And believe it or not, this thing cuts great in reverse backwards. I know that sounds silly, but where we're at, we have some really small properties and you know, the stripes, as I say, don't pay the bills, but on a lawn where you just gotta make a quick little backward pass on your way out instead of making a whole nother run, it mulches, bags, discharges beautifully. No problem at all when it comes to that. But that's that's been a big plus, because up here, it's either sandy soil, dirty grass, some beautiful lawns, some not, some junk weeds, doesn't matter. Cuts beautifully, stripes beautifully, either way. But, the bag that comes with it is nice. You can get the Accelerator or Wrights brand. Doesn't matter. But actually on here too, we have the grass flap, which is pretty neat. Um, it's not perfect. It does leave does leave a little, little grass from time to time. Doesn't bother us. I mean, it's barely noticeable. But the grass flap is pretty cool. You know, like if we're discharging, we'll have it up. But if we're around mulch beds and we're not backing, you know, we have it down. Personally, down here, we won't bag every other week lawns. You're, you're not, you're not paying, you're not paying for that. You know, if you, if you're cutting every other week, which we don't cut many of, if the trucks, if the truck is parked at a property for say, and a neighbor asks for an every other week cut, then we'll do it if we're already there. But we won't, we don't do many every other week mowings. So we'll have that shoot wide open when we don't bag those properties. But with that too, 
that area, the blades. The blades are super simple to change on these rights. Right below these panels here, one on this side, one on the other, is just a bolt in the washer and the blade comes right off. Jack it right up and you do it all right from the bottom. It's, it's that simple. You don't even need to take those covers off, which is sweet, but that's easy. Much easier than the Skags and the Toro we used to run. But bagger, you know, the belts, every everything down there, good to go. No issues at all. Handles are great. Some guys, this is like a serious love-hate relationship. Skag is completely opposite with these handles. But up here, you have the bar in the middle, and then these two will move back and forth. So I like that. I don't like how the Skag... You know, you have to, yeah, I think they have the bar. So yeah, skag somewhere else, but I like how these handles are and you barely have to move your hands if your hands are here because you can reach back and forth, which is a lot better on uh, your hands, to be honest. But the pad back there too is not so great. I can be honest with you, this, the, this pad has so much wear on it and it only has 417 hours, but I think they could do much better in the field of the pad because you know you do pay more for these mowers but there's actually less but you're pay you're really paying for quality on these machines i was years ago we were going to get we were going to go all skag but just because you can save a grand or two instead of going with a right but went with the right and yeah there's no no going back but the pad's not too great you know, that's something that's going to have to be replaced soon on all of the mowers, all the right mowers, but that's that. But no belt issues, like I said, cuts beautifully. There's, you know, have, haven't had to change the battery either, and I believe this is just a basic, Christ, this is just a basic, like, interstate, yeah, interstate battery. But still, we run, we run everything on trickle chargers here in the winter. I do not drain fuel. I don't like, you know, I know there's pros and cons to all that kind of stuff, but I just didn't like the idea of draining it and then those, uh, I guess it's called the lines, get dry rot and things like that. So we trickle charge everything in here and the stuff in the trailers out there. And that's how we run that, pretty much. So uh, over 400 hours, I'm trying to think, you know, nothing's broke on this mower. You know, um, every winter, Regardless, I actually have the paper up here. These are actually on all all the skags, or I'm sorry, all the rights and all of our mowers too. You know, we have push mowers, one skag, and the old Toro. But everything's kind of labeled what we do in the winter. Uh, what I'm what I'm getting at is we do the spark plugs every year on these machines. We do the spark plugs, air filter. We do one oil change every season just to stay on top of it. I, I know some guys, you know, they'll do like an oil change once a year or at the end of the year. That's not really how we've done it. I do it once a season. You know, I know it's, it might seem silly, it might seem overkill. Sometimes we change it and it looks perfectly fine, but sometimes we change it and it's, I don't know. It looks like it should have been done sooner, should have been done later, this was in the past. So again, we do it once a season. But over the winter, what these little tags are, like I showed on these mowers, Stable, the winterization, seafoam. Again, it's an old school thing. We run it in everything in the winter. Plugs, oil change, everything for the winter. But besides the basic maintenance, like I said, oil change, spark plugs, the hydro filters. I'm sorry, almost forgot about that. So this back pad, this is actually the pedal back here to the grass plug. But this back pad loosens up here. Underneath here is the hydro filter. That was changed at three, yeah, 392 hours. And that's when that was done at. So that, I believe we do, we do the hydro at 300 hours, which might be early for the rights. I think it's four or five, I don't even know. Three might be it. We might've done it at three because that's what they said, but we did it at three. And you have the eyes and glass up there to keep an eye on it and, and right up there, but did the hydro on all the rights did the hydro on the skag too over this summer but that's really you know a beautiful machine you pay a little more but you, you you and it seems like you don't get as much 
like the skags are built so big and so tough it's pretty cool you know the skag the skag is a really neat looking machine so it's pretty it's pretty neat like because how big they are and how tough they are and you know the extra padding and the big the big console up there but the rights the rights kind of look like plain if that if that makes any sense at all but great machine I, it will never go back we've like i said there was no problems at all with this mower and this is the oldest the oldest <coughs> excuse me the oldest stander we have like i said the first one we bought was a, a belt drive pull cord which we still have which is a great little machine we just run that up once in a while around some commercial properties in my property but that's really you know that that's really it for the for the right you know there's nothing Nothing to it, you know. The fuel, the fuel tank's pretty big. This is a pretty big fuel tank. Um, I don't know, you know. It's you know, you got the gauge right up top, so you can look over your fuel shut off, on off, parking brake. What's really nice, and I forgot to mention, with these rights is you can have the parking brake down, and the mower won't turn off. But you got to make sure the blades are off. So if you're jumping up and down to grab stuff, move stuff, you just got to shut the blades off. For the skags, I believe you can have the blade off, and if you push that lever down, the skag still the skag still shuts off if you're not in park. So the right will not shut off if my blades are off and this parking brake is down, and you gotta just hop on and off real quick to move something, which is really really nice, especially in the middle of August when it's 100 degrees out. But. Besides that, that's, that's really it with the rights. That's everything I could really think of off the top of my head. Um, definitely a great machine. We've run all rights besides the one skag we bought on a really great deal two years ago. That's all for leaf cleanups now. We have that in a leaf cleanup trailer. We run that through our commercial lots uh, in the summer, every other Saturday, and then a couple weeklies on Saturdays. The skag is completely commercial. We have an old right walk behind. That is used kind of here and there. But this is our main, and I'm gonna do all hour reviews on each of these two. I believe this one had one issue. It's less hours, I believe. This one just hasn't been winterized yet. Or it has been, I don't know. Anyway, we'll do reviews on all these. Um, but really nothing major. If you, if you look at one of my past videos, we've, we've had some issues with a Skag. Uh, that, that's on our channel. I don't think we will be visiting Skag anytime soon. But that's that's really it with the rights. It's very simple, very easy. Never any issues with these mowers. The dash, again, nothing's fancy on these things. You know, the pad, like I said before, the pad stinks. I already feel my knees on the wood. 400 hours. Dash, nothing, nothing, nothing fancy up here like the Skag. The Skag has the you know the tiger eye and all that. This has the hour meter up there. Choke, throttle, blades. Start life, but. That that's really it guys and then you know you got the hydro but it's it's really a simple machine and then I did mention the grass flap we have it's awesome we like it that's on all the machines we have but that's that's pretty much it guys again overall great mower no issues no downtime when it comes to this you know if you're solo or you just have one guy or one or two machines you don't want downtime. You don't want problems. You don't want issues that you that are gonna put you behind. But per, that's just our personal preference. Again, our right dealer's right down the street. It's when I started when I was a kid, and no issues since then. You know, I never had any downtime on our, on our old Velky. I keep saying Velky. I think that's what it is, or it's the name of the wheels. I don't know. The old walk behind, and then you know, no issues with these guys either. No, nothing that'll set you back personally personally i know again everyone has their their preference but our preference is right and like i said you pay a little more but i i would much rather pay a little more than have issues you know i i would i don't know that's just our preference again that's it guys overall i really gotta say 10 out of 10 with these rights just hands down and we like we've ran a skag i had a toro i have you know we we've done other mowers little stuff i mean nothing that's really the only name brand would be toro and skag 
and the right was it. The Toro we have, that's an old dinosaur. That thing was my backup. It's my old old pool cord price back in high school. Um, great machine though, great machine. But again, that one had its issues too, but it was used. No issues with the rights. Absolutely love them. The guys love them. No downtime, no problems. That's it guys. Um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll have some other stuff coming out here on these other machines we have. Kind of give you our reviews. You know, you, you really want to look at reviews when you when you go through these videos before you spend, you know, 10, 11 grand plus now with inflation on these machines. You know, because it, it really, you know, it's, it's a big decision. I know a lot, of, the bigger you get, you know, you have more money coming in and you can kind of mess around with things but when you're starting out you really want to you really want to go off reviews you know the, the closest dealer is you know it's, it's a big deal too you know you don't want to go to a dealer that's an hour away just because you, you 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 know you love one brand or you love one color it's not it's not how to do it but again thanks for watching guys more stuff coming out on these machines if you have any questions please comment below we really mainly do our own work on these rights so we're kind we're okay with most things um, it, some of these have been to the dealer a couple times for some things that are out of our realm of knowledge But thanks for watching if there's any any questions comment below But I got some more stuff coming out on everything else we run. All right guys out.